welcome our first speaker today, Susan Starr, who will be speaking to us about digging deep, goal setting in inpatient rehabilitation. <coughs> Good morning everyone. Thank you to the committee for organising this conference and the opportunity to present today. Today I'm going to provide a quick snapshot about goal setting and inpatient rehabilitation. When I first thought about presenting goal setting, the big question in my mind was, if the goal is to improve a person's semantic access, how do I measure this? How do I achieve this with patients with severe aphasia? What does this sort of goal mean to the multidisciplinary team? Do we as a profession have some scores that mean something to the doctors? For example, physios have the Berg balance scale and the six minute walk test. How do we set goals with patients who can't identify pictures? What types of goals are set? Is it okay to have impairment based goals? Is it okay that the therapist guides or leads these goals? So, it's complex. I work at St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney in rehabilitation and the caseload's mixed, but it's predominantly stroke neurology. I reviewed 17 files um, and the files in rehabilitation, there's, um, there's different sections in the file, but there's a specific goal setting section. And every week at the MDT meeting we write in those goals because there's definitely consultants who will not do the goals conference if there's no goals. So we write in the goals and we review them each week and set them again. So that's the section I um, reviewed. So we had a look at 17 files. There were 13 men, four women, and their age ranged from 30 years to 84 years. 10 out of the 17 were still working, and the average and the length of stay ranged once again from two days to 74 days. 10 out of the 17 had more than one speech pathology diagnosis, i.e. dysphagia, dysarthria, aphasia. 15 out of the 17 had aphasia post-stroke. 14 out of the 17 um, files had goals, but the majority of these goals were set by the therapist and were also impairment-based goals. And some of the examples are here. So uh, the patient to identify target from a choice of two semantically different objects, patient to sort um, object into semantic categories, and reduce response time in conversation to four, sec four seconds. Some functional goals included use notepad and pen, explore low-tech AAC, recall family names in 30 seconds, complete daily written typing activities, i.e. sending a text message, sending an email. One out of the 17 files noted the importance of collaborative goal setting. And nine out of 17 files noted the importance of communication partner training, whether that's training the staff in how to work with someone with aphasia or the family in communication. So in keeping with the theme of the conference, sea change, and, change, and changing clinical practice, what did I learn? Well, the importance of collaboration with patients, family, and staff. Goal setting with, the, with aphasia friendly material. And also the fact that pa the, fa the patient and the family, it's also an adjustment. So you come to hospital, you go into the acute hospital, you might then get transferred to rehabilitation. Um, and when you come to rehabilitation, it's still an ongoing process, as, as I think everyone in the room here would know, from whether it's a clinical experience or um, feedback from people and um, families who experience aphasia every day. Also, I guess therapists can be seen as the expert. And is that okay in some cases when the patient first comes to hospital? I still think they're really adjusting at times to what's happened and trying to understand that. Goal setting isn't just done at a set point in time. I think we all know it's ongoing. And also the huge challenges of setting goals with patients who have severe aphasia. I do think the landscape of the patients, as um, Rowan said this morning, is changing for inpatient rehab. So we are getting patients who do have severe aphasia. They need OT, speech, physio, um, dietitian, social work as well. <laughs> And lastly, um, there's actually, when, as I started reading, there's lots of great work out there already from Linda Worrell, Deborah Perch, Wade, and Felicity Bright, even on engagement and rehab. And a special thanks to Lindsay Nichols. Thank you.